isn't housework your job? Why do I have to do it just because you were hospitalized? You originally said I didn't have to do the cleaning, so I absolutely won't do it. If you understand, then hurry up and clean. If you don't like it, let's get a divorce. After being hospitalized for three days due to overwork, I returned home and was speechless at the deplorable condition of the house. I wondered how the inside of the house could turn into such a mess in just three days. The entrance was littered with muddy shoes, and the laundry piled up in the washing machine had an unpleasant smell. The kitchen sink was filled with unwashed pots, dishes, and cups piled up like a mountain. On the table, half-eaten takeout meals and empty containers were left, emitting a foul odor. The floor, of course, was covered in dust and felt gritty. Despite the situation, my husband blamed me for not cleaning and didn't lift a finger to help. And to top it off, he mentioned divorce. I didn't want to worry my kind-hearted in-laws, so I didn't want a divorce. I was more concerned about my in-laws than my husband, so I lowered my head to him. Can't you reconsider the divorce? My husband smirked as if he had expected me to say that. Sure, if you really don't want a divorce. My name is Johanna. I love my job. And before I knew it, I was in my 40s. Even so, I didn't mind it too much, but my parents felt sorry for me and started arranging matchmaking meetings. I initially declined the first few proposals, stating my love for work and how I absolutely didn't want to get married. However, the last proposal they brought up was a matchmaking with my childhood friend Melvin, who lives near my parents' house. A matchmaking with Melvin, huh? They've always been kind to me, so maybe I should at least meet him. Convinced by my parents, I agreed to meet him, but it had been a long time since I had seen my childhood friend, with whom I had been matched with. My parents are busy, so we only communicated over the phone. Even during the matchmaking process, I only met with my childhood friend. He is five years younger than me, and when we were kids, I used to hold his hand a lot. Yeah, yeah, I used to always follow you around, right? When you were little, you were such a cute, spoiled kid that I couldn't help but tease you. That's right. It was during a summer fair when we were little. We reminisced about old memories and hit it off. Melvin said it was okay for me to continue working, so we started dating and a year later we got married. This happened when I was 38 years old. Since we did not have a wedding, Melvin, who became my husband, met my parents only at the introduction meeting, and after that, we did not see each other very often. To make up for it, my in-laws were very considerate and caring. I had often visited my husband's house since I was a child and knew his parents well. My in-laws were very happy that I was getting married. I'm so happy that you're coming to be our daughter-in-law, Johanna. Are you really sure about Melvin? Yeah, yeah. This guy has always lived with his parents and can't do anything, you know? Melvin had never lived on his own, and he always said that his parents had taken care of all the household chores and he couldn't do anything. Even so, I thought he could manage some things. Whatever he couldn't do, I could handle. That's what I believed. However, Melvin, the washing machine wasn't running. Just putting clothes in won't do it. You have to add detergent and press the button. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It turned out that Melvin couldn't do any housework at all. I tried to teach him a few times, but he couldn't seem to remember and kept making mistakes, leaving me to redo everything. I couldn't help but chuckle at my husband, who apologized with a look of embarrassment, thinking that some things never change from childhood. It's okay, I'll take care of it so you don't have to do anything. Oh, but could you at least handle the simple task of taking out the trash? I couldn't help it, so I decided to take on the household chores myself and asked my husband to handle the task of taking out the trash, something anyone could do. My husband is generally kind, but sometimes he has these moments that make me wonder. For example, when we were looking at my high school yearbook together, he pointed at a classmate and said, This person looks ugly, wow. When talking about the school trip, Johanna, did you go on the school trip? I thought you couldn't because your family was poor. He said these things seemingly without any ill intent. Even with the dishes I served for dinner, this tastes bad. I don't want any more. He would openly express his thoughts, much like a child, and I wished he would be a bit more subtle in his words. I did bring this up with him once, but 
He responded with a sulky attitude and refused to listen, so it was impossible to have a conversation about it. By the time we reached the third year of our marriage, my job became busier than ever during the peak season, with about a month of continuous overtime. I would come home late at night, leaving me with very little time for household chores. As a result, the house quickly became messy. Hey, Melvin, could you help with some of the housework? Seeing how challenging it had become for me alone, I asked Melvin for assistance, but he frowned in response. Didn't you say I didn't have to do it? Did you forget what you told me? He retorted this way and refused to listen. With no other option, I began waking up early in the morning and cleaning late at night, sacrificing my sleep to manage the household chores. This was amidst the fatigue from work, and one day I collapsed due to overwork while at work. I had to be taken to the hospital, where I stayed for three days. Johanna, are you okay? My in-laws came to visit, expressing their concern. They brought me a change of clothes and necessary items. I'm sorry for causing you worry. I was just a bit tired. Thank you for the things. Melvin couldn't make it because he's too busy with work and household chores. He just dropped off the stuff at the doorstep. Although I felt a bit frustrated that he couldn't take some time off, I thought he might be trying his best to manage the unfamiliar household tasks, so I reconsidered. You've been taking care of me since I was a child, haven't you? It's okay, it's mutual. More importantly, I'm sorry Melvin couldn't come. He can be a handful like a child, but he's a sincere boy. We're getting older and you're our only support, so please take care of him. Of course. Despite feeling apologetic, I had no choice but to agree. My own parents traveled frequently during my childhood, so my nearby in-laws always looked at after me and took me in. They were very kind and took good care of me. Because of their kindness and the gratitude I felt, I couldn't refuse their requests. However, when I returned home from the hospital and saw the state of the house, I couldn't believe my eyes. What's going on here? As I opened the front door, there were muddy shoes scattered all around and there was no place to step. When I tried to wash my hands in the bathroom, I found a pile of dirty smelly laundry in the washing machine that hadn't been washed. In the living room, the kitchen sink was stacked high with unwashed pots, dishes, and cups. Next to them were leftover takeout food and empty containers emitting a foul smell. The floor was covered in dust, rough to the touch. How did it turn into such a mess in just three days? Even though I had just been discharged from the hospital, my head was already spinning. In the living room, my husband was lying on the sofa, relaxing and asleep. I'm home. Hey, what's all this? The inside of the house looks like a dump. How about cleaning up a bit? As I confronted my husband, he woke up suddenly and gave me an unpleasant glare. What's the rush? The house is a mess. Weren't you supposed to take care of things while I was in the hospital? What have you been doing? I scolded him, and in response, my husband shouted in anger. Shut up. Isn't housework your job? Why should I have to do it just because you decided to go to the hospital on your own? You originally said I didn't have to do any housework, so I absolutely won't. You even said you would do all the housework, so I've put up with it. My husband became furious and yelled back at me. I was taken aback by his sudden change in demeanor, but it seemed like he was very upset about being scolded by me. I had always been the caring older sister figure who would do anything if asked, so perhaps he had expected an easy life after marriage. He uttered in frustration, This has been disappointing. I had thought that the reason he couldn't come to visit was because he was working hard on the housework, so I felt betrayed. I was further perplexed by his attitude. What's going on, all of a sudden? Then my husband began speaking as if he had given up on hiding something. I'm dating a wealthy CEO's daughter in her 20s now. She's much younger and more attractive than you, and her family is rich. Plus, she's an excellent cook. You're nothing like her. There's no benefit for me in being with you anymore, so let's get a divorce. His words left me in shock. My husband had been having an affair. 
While I was busy with work and house chores, I hadn't noticed his change during those busy days. I'll pay you alimony, you know. About one thousand dollars. My husband, unfazed by my reaction, said with a laugh, I should probably divorce such a husband quickly. I understand that, but my in-laws were on my mind. My in-laws had asked me to take care of Melvin. If I divorced him in this state, it would only burden my elderly in-laws. Thinking about that, I couldn't bring myself to agree to a divorce. Could you reconsider the divorce? When I lowered my head to my husband, he gave me a triumphant look. I didn't know you liked me that much. Fine, we won't divorce, but you'll do all the housework, from taking out the trash and everything else. I won't do anything. Also, I plan to quit my current job and change careers, so you'll have to cover all the living expenses during that time. Oh, and improve your cooking skills. If you can't accept these conditions, then it's divorce. Understood. Reluctantly, I accepted these terms, feeling like a servant. A week later, my in-laws, who came to check on me, visited my home, so I opened the door. Johanna, how are you feeling? When my parents-in-law saw my face, they turned pale. Is something wrong? Never mind that. Just look in the mirror. Being dragged by my mother-in-law, I went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror as instructed. There, I was shocked. What is this? In the mirror, I saw a gaunt, disheveled figure with pale skin and a lifeless expression. I had been so busy with work, house chores, and taking care of my husband that I never took the time to look at myself in the mirror. To think I looked like this, my parents-in-law, upon seeing my condition, cried. I'm so sorry, Johanna. You should just leave Melvin. We are truly sorry for burdening you. You don't need to worry about us. Please, divorce that guy. They repeated their apologies many times. Afterward, we had a family meeting and the divorce was finalized with my husband agreeing to pay proper alimony, not just the $1,000 he initially suggested. It seemed my husband never had any intention of continuing our married life. He had merely used me as an ATM for living expenses during his period of unemployment. My parents-in-law were furious with him and demanded an apology. But I, exhausted, declined their request and returned to my parents' home. The alimony was successfully transferred and a month after the divorce was finalized, my parents had reserved a fancy restaurant for me today. As I waited for my parents, who were running late due to work, I was surprised to hear someone say, Huh? I turned around and saw my ex-husband standing there with a smirk on his face. Beside him was his new wife. Isn't it Johanna? You've aged, haven't you? You don't look 41. And you, just because you got alimony from me doesn't mean a place like this is suitable for a poor person like you, right? My ex-husband said, making a mockery of me. Leah is completely different. Her face and skin are much better than yours. A woman in her 20s is definitely fresher than a old hag. Plus, I'm happy because I married the president's daughter. Divorcing a poor person like you was the right choice. My ex-husband started boasting about his new spouse. When he mentioned a name, it sounded familiar. I couldn't help but stare intently at the new spouse. The moment the new spouse awkwardly looked away, I suddenly realized. I see. That's how it was. Melvin, you've been mocking me for so long, but the foolish one here is you. I'll give it back to you twice as hard. Understanding everything a little smirk escaped from me. Ignorance is bliss. My condolences. What do you mean? Don't make excuses just because you're frustrated. As my ex-husband continued to confront me, I explained to him. Your new spouse, Leah, was my classmate, you know. Huh? What are you talking about? Leah is in her 20s. Do you seriously think you can pass for being in your 20s yourself? No, Leah is different. She's the same age as me, but she's lied about her age. She's probably had some plastic surgery to look younger. Do you remember when you saw my high school album and called someone ugly? That was Leah. I recognized her because there's a resemblance. Saying this, Johanna's husband looked wide-eyed at his new spouse. N no, you've got it wrong. 
As the new spouse denied it, while acting suspiciously, I managed to guess her personal information. Come to think of it, you had a distinctive mole on the back of your neck, didn't you? I remember because our classmates used to tease you about it. Upon hearing their accusation, the husband turned pale. It seemed to be true. When confronted by her husband, the new spouse confessed. It turns out, the new spouse had a complex about her face and ended up repeatedly getting plastic surgery, leading to a dependence on it. She also lied about their age. My ex-husband was dumbfounded by the confession of his new spouse, but... I have more money than you, he shouted. I sighed at my ex-husband's words. It seems like you've been mistaken for 41 years, but I'm not poor. My parents were busy running a company, that's all. In other words, I'm a president's daughter, and our family is reasonably well off. It seems my ex-husband used to think of me as a poor child who was often left in others' care when I was young, assuming my parents were desperately working. However, it turns out, it was my ex-husband's parents who received financial support by taking care of me. While my parents' house was small for our family to live in, they mostly stayed at the company overnight, so the house was originally purchased for my use by them. By the way, the reason I worked so hard was not because I was poor, but because I didn't want to lose to my parents. I wanted to show them I could succeed on my own. When I told him this, my ex-husband was in a state of shock. That's when my parents arrived. I've heard everything. Dad is furious and giving a lecture to my ex-husband. Mom is smiling faintly, but it's the face she makes when she's angry. In this unexpected situation, my ex-husband turns pale and panics. Then the surprised manager arrives due to my dad's orders and tries to kick them out. What are you doing? Leah is the president's daughter, you know? And yet, do you really think it's okay to treat her like this? In response to the shouting ex-husband, my mom chuckles. You don't know anything, dear. Her family's in the red and on the brink of bankruptcy. Their company has so few employees you can count them on one hand. It's a tiny, struggling business. Th that's My mother revealed the truth, and my ex-husband and his new spouse seemed on the verge of starting a fight, eventually being escorted out by the manager. I couldn't help but think, serves him right. Afterward, my parents sincerely apologized to me. My parents talked about how they pushed for my marriage to my ex-husband just because his parents were nice people. I didn't blame my parents because I had similar thoughts. Furthermore, they insisted that next time they would find someone good, but I politely declined. I'm already in my 40s, my career is going well, and I've built a solid professional foundation. From now on, I intend to live my own life and trust any good encounters to the course of destiny. A year later, I received a message from my ex-husband. It seems that at first he had a good time with his new spouse, but as my mother predicted, the new spouse's company went bankrupt. With no money left, the new spouse couldn't afford cosmetic maintenance, resulting in an inability to maintain a youthful appearance. She ended up looking older than their actual age. My ex-husband tried to get a divorce, but it seems his new spouse refused, reasoning that they had finally gotten married. Furthermore, my ex-husband has been abandoned by both his ex-in-laws and can't return to his family home. He's also been shunned by friends, so it seems he has no one to turn to. He doesn't have a job, and even part-time work doesn't last long for him. He came to me asking for alimony, claiming he's in financial trouble. But of course, there's no way I'll give him any. When I told him that if he contacts me again, I'll consult a lawyer, he never reached out again. I quit the job I was doing and joined my parents' company. Although I'm currently busy working as the future president, I find my work fulfilling and lead very satisfying days.